Hello, hello, hello. I'm Christian and this is Katie. Hi. <laughs> so grateful to be here with Katie. Katie was a student of mine many years ago, actually 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Katie is one of the very nice people who reached out to me about participating in this project. And I'm so happy, so happy to be looking at that face and, and be talking to her about this topic. And um, I'm going to start this off the way I've started off all the other videos. It's basically just two questions, and then I'm going to let you take the reins. So uh, the first question will be, tell me something that you believe or some things that you believe you manifested in your life and how they went, how, how you did it, all that. And then we're gonna get into something you wanna manifest for the present or future, and we'll see if I can help you figure out the path to that. So with that, Katie, please go right ahead. I love that. Uh, just like before we even get into it, I wanna just comment on how, what a full circle experience this feels like, because you had such a profound impact on me when I was in school and when I was a student of yours. Thank and now you. being a professional artist and being in Los Angeles, like it just feels like very aligned. Like everything just feels like, wow, yeah, this conversation is meant to be happening right now. So thank you for having me. Well, um, thank you for that comment. I, I, yeah. I, was not fishing for a compliment, but thank you. That's no, no, it means no. the world to all of your your former educators to see you doing well. It's yeah. it is manifest destiny. I mean, you created it. We just yeah. we just set the table for parts of it. But you're mm -hmm. the one. You're the one who cooked the meal. Yeah. So. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Thank you're you welcome. for being my my chef and showing me how it's done. I appreciate Absolutely. it. <laughs> hey, any way I can continue to be helpful, I will. You know that. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. So I mean. On the topic of manifestation, I would definitely say making it out to California is something that I manifested. Um, starting in college, I went to the College of New Jersey and um, I had a best friend there. So he's still my best friend to this day. He now lives in San Francisco, um, but his name is Brandon. And he and I were absolute best friends in college. And he and I kind of always talked about after graduation, like what's the move? Because if you want to be anywhere, you know, after it, when you go to school in New Jersey, it's typically New York or Philly. Those are kind of the two mm -hmm. yeah. go-to options that a lot of people that went to TCNJ do. And neither of those cities were really calling us. Like we both were just kind of like, mm, it just doesn't feel like my city. It doesn't feel like where I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, and we both agreed on that. We both you were knew. kind of like, you yeah. Intrinsically, each of you knew that you needed to be somewhere else. Yeah, because we both maybe, and maybe it was just because we both were in Northern Jersey. So we would go into Manhattan like for field trips. And, you know, we both worked in Manhattan right after graduation for almost a year. We didn't even make it a full year after graduation, though, by the way. We moved very quickly. Like it was. But New York was your point of geographical reference, which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. For sure. So, yeah, I mean, we graduated in May. And then by February of the following year, we were in LA. So it was quick. It was really quick. We both did our very short New York chapter like to make money when, while still living at home um, and save up. And I mean, it wasn't much, but it was enough to get us out here. And But leading up to actually making the move, I had a vision board. I love doing vision boarding. I mean, it shouldn't come as a surprise to you whatsoever. That like, Not at I mean, all, but I'm, we've never talked about this. We've yeah. never talked about this. So this is great to hear you using the lingo. Yeah, yeah, Keep definitely. So, yeah. So, yeah, so I had a vision board um, where I would put... Um, either mantras, like daily reminders that, you know, I, and I always hang it in a place in my bedroom where I see it every day and I look at it as I'm putting on my deodorant or putting perfume on or whatever. It's something that I always look at. Um, and California was on there. I knew that I wanted to make it out here. I just didn't know how or when or the logistics or how am I going to get my car out there? Are we going to ship it? Or are we going to road trip? Like all of the little minutia details and stuff. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And like having that first conversation with my parents, telling them like, hey, I'm going to move to California. And like initially it was my point, my, the only point of reference I had of California was San Diego because I have um, an aunt and uncle and cousin who live in San Diego. So I had visited them over the years. Mm -hmm. So initially I was thinking San Diego, like I just kept saying San Diego, California, San Diego. And cause I had never been to Los Angeles before. Um, so Brandon and I took a trip to LA for the first time in January of 2015. So right after we graduated, like, you know, not even a full mm -hmm. year later, just to check it out. And it was like, yep, confirmation. Like this is 
this is it. This feels right. This is, yes, this is where you, we want to be. You set an intention, not to interrupt you, but you set yeah. a clear intention to go to California and it wasn't by default. And mm -hmm. here's the thing. I think that New York or Philly would have been by default for either yeah. one of you because it was the thing to do and it was the place nearby and other people are doing it. You had enough wherewithal at that time as a, you know, 20s, early 20 something, mm -hmm. um, late teens, early 20 something to say, it's not really there. Mm -hmm. It's not really there. It's a point of reference, but it's not really there. Mm -hmm. Something drew you westward. Mm -hmm. And then that was confirmed. But you had faith. You had, you walked in having, and I know faith is a loaded word. Perhaps we could say you had belief. Totally. I mean, you could say faith for sure. Yeah. I mean, there, there was definitely a level of trust, like trust in the universe that this was going to work out. Um, mm -hmm. Because when we did decide to move, I, I didn't have a job lined up. We didn't have an apartment. He and I stayed at, he had a coworker who was bi-coastal and he was like, oh, I'm in my New York place for the next month. You can take my LA place. Look you know, how it lines up. Notice well, how all the tectonic plates move into place. Yep. All the pieces of the stage set slide into place to allow the performers to come in and do say their lines necessarily and i do believe that when you are acting in alignment mm -hmm. everything will line up for you because you said you didn't know how you're going to get there what the minutiae was what the logistics are it's living proof that when you take that leap of faith again there's that word but mm -hmm. when you really believe that something is right and all signs are pointing to the fact that this is available and accessible to you because mm -hmm. yeah. it, it it's it's I've never heard the story before, so to hear it after all these years is great. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so, so you're staying in this place. Yeah, and it was in vacated Burbank. for a month. Yep, yep. It was in Burbank. We only stayed there, I think, a total of three weeks. We found an apartment that quickly. I got a job that quickly, like literally within two weeks of landing. And of the did. job, yeah, and the job that I got was one that I had been applying um, online to jobs when I was still in New Jersey, like in anticipation of moving to California. And most of the bites that I got back, they were like, okay, when can you come in for an interview? And I was like, it, to them, it sounded like, oh, well, I'm not there yet, but, you know, and it sounded like some girl that was trying to make it out to Hollywood and like, you know, wasn't there yet, but blah, blah, blah. So not a lot of people took me seriously until I was actually physically there. And so this was one of the jobs that I had applied to online. And when they called me, I I like didn't even remember which job it was like I was like which one is this like I had been just like rapid fire applying to yeah. every job you know? shot throw it all at the wall see what sticks yeah 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 exactly and um, it turned out to be a marketing research agency so um, basically they did uh, like focus groups and online surveys and they would give me the data and I would have to make it look pretty in like infographics and PowerPoint presentations and you know any kind of data visualization and I ended up making like the best friends there it's a really super young company definitely had like a startup vibe that's where I like kind of just that was my introduction to LA was like having great co-workers and you know doing something that was like really fun it was almost like an instant family and I mean full disclosure for the, those watching Katie was one of my students I'm familiar with her family I mean I, I, I know her parents I know her younger brother um, great family so I mean, it takes a certain amount of bravery to leave and go 3,200 miles across the country. Mind you, you're with your best friend, but it's a different situation yeah. um, where that immediate infrastructure is no longer physically around you, but mm -hmm. you had spiritual infrastructure mm -hmm. yes. and you had your aura and you had your belief and mm -hmm. you weren't going to stop. You were just going to do it. And you... I believe that when you shine the right light, the right light is reflected back at you. Mm -hmm. It may not come to you directly right where you expect it. It may come from somewhere else. It definitely came from somewhere you did not expect, but because the universe hates a void, there was a void open in this one space, this one company, and you were selected to come in and you were that right puzzle piece to, to fit that. And you were rewarded in that, not just with a job and with money, you were socially supported and you were socially rewarded. And that's yeah. huge. That's Definitely. huge. Because how many people can't stand who they work with? 
Exactly. And to this day, that job, because I'm on my third job now, you know, in the five years that I've been here, um, and I still haven't had the same social experience that I did at that first job. Like the, the last two places, you know, that I've been at, my coworkers are fine, but I'm not hanging out with them on the weekends. And it's a know, different, it's a different thing. And you, and you know what, part of that might even be your different. Yeah. Because you may have, you have a, probably have a different social infrastructure now than you did when you started working there and you were new to Los Angeles. So yeah, and I was have, like, be my friend, be my friend. You know? Your intention <laughs> is in other places, but your intention was to go in and do the best job possible. Mm -hmm. Look how you were rewarded and look, look how that, I mean, you probably can answer this. I'm just going to actually ask the question, sub question. Yeah. What did that initial experience in that leap of faith create after that job? What, what has been created afterwards because of those initial leaps of faith? What did you get out of that? Yeah, I mean, definitely having the friends and the community and, and all of that, but then like, because of that job, then I got my next job, you know, because I wasn't as fresh and green right out of college anymore. I had a couple of years, you know, two years working experience. And then, you know, I was able to move on to a different company within beauty, which is where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that space right now. I don't know if it's where I'm going to be forever, but right now graphic design within the beauty industry is really fun and interesting and exciting for me so I and they even took a, a chance on me at um, my second company they you know because I didn't have any beauty experience but I had graphic design experience and I had market research experience so I spun the, it like, you the know, infographic all market research stuff then translated to we can just overlay that over this yeah and you probably brought in actually something even more fresh because you came from somewhere else you didn't have a predestined idea of what the graphics for the beauty industry were supposed to look like. Right. You yeah. Created, you, you were, you were co-creating with them something completely new. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's another part of manifestation is to make something new, not something that someone else has. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Because when you try to get something someone else already has, you get repelled because it belongs to them. Yeah. And when you go to create something new, or if you, you know, hold someone up as an example to follow, but you want to make your own thing, mm -hmm. that's when the really good stuff happens. Yeah. That's why copycats never stick around long. Mm -hmm. Right. You want the OG original article of whatever it is you're creating, whether it's art, whether it's graphic design, whether it's fashion, it's for, this is for the artists out there. You want to create something from a fresh personal point of view because no one else will have done it and nobody else could have done it. Yeah. So that's why you were successful in the beauty industry. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, that's yeah. the guidance I'm getting. Yeah. Even with the past picture, I wanted to, de de I wanted to demystify that for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely, for sure. But yeah, yeah it, it was, uh, like you said, it definitely helped having um, my best friend with me and also knowing that I had my aunt and uncle down in San Diego who like now I go down, I mean, I, I did it, you know, as soon as I moved out there that like for the smaller holidays, like Thanksgiving and stuff, I can just drive and I'll be with family, you know, in less than three hours, you know, That's it's usually great. like two and a half hours to get there. San Diego's very nice. So yeah. Beautiful. It's so, so nice. And yeah, it's, it's amazing, but you know, still feeling kind of like overwhelmed and in this big city and everything, but I just, all along, I had this like very specific intuitive feeling that like, even before, you know, things started coming together when it was just a seed in my head, it was like, this is going to happen. Like yep. I just knew I'm going to make it out there. I have no idea how, but it is going to happen. And I feel the same way about meeting Jason Mraz, who you know is my still, favorite. Still, <laughs> yeah. Still, we haven't met yet, but we're getting closer. Because well, as someone who has met favorite. most of his favorite artists, It'll I, I manifested all of it. Yeah. I even no. as like a young kid, I went, I'm meeting this one and that one. I've met almost everybody. Absolutely. I have my elevator pitch ready for when I do meet him. Like I know exactly what I'm going to tell him. Like I know because, and I'll give you the abridged version is basically. <laughs> this is great. I love it. 
I'm Every writing episode. Jason Mraz in the tags on this. Video. Yeah, yeah, tagging him. I'm tagging totally him. tagging him. Okay, yes. go ahead. I love it. I love it. Um, every album that he's come out with, it's been almost co consistently every four years, and it always lined up with a chapter in my life. So his very first album was when I was in elementary school, if you can believe oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. 2003, The Remedy was his first single. And so I was in fifth grade. And then he came out with another album when I was in middle school, another album when I was in high school, another album when I was I in college. I remember that. I remember another that. Yes, another album right in that period in between college and moving out to California. And Which then is a like, weird you know, transition. Yeah, exactly. When you see your life mirrored in the work of an artist or in the bodies of work, not even the overall body, but the bodies of work of an artist, that's really something. Exactly. So, yeah, you are going to get to interact with them someday. You are. I will. I will. So, no, yeah, no, you will. You it's will. that feeling. Really yeah. quick, yeah. I'm, I, hate to, I hate to blow up your spot. Don't be shocked if you end up in San Diego at some point in your life. Yeah, yeah. Don't be surprised. You might yeah. actually end up there, even if just for a few years. Yeah. Don't be surprised if you end up there. There are myriad, myriad career opportunities for you, both short-term and long-term, part-time, multiple um, jobs at once, and then big long-term ones. Um, and all of your opportunities I'm seeing are crisscrossing over one another, mm. meaning um, there's opportunities that can take you in many different directions. Yes. And one thing will interlock with another thing, will interlock with another thing, will interlock with another thing. Uh, the path you're on is really healthy. Just stay with it. Thank you. Just stay with it. And when something seems like a really, really cool, I, really cool idea, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, it. it seems like a really cool idea. Go for it. You're going to be rewarded. Yeah. For if you sure. have too many questions about it, let it go. And they and the questions might answer themselves for you. But if mm -hmm. you have a gut feeling like, "Ooh, I want to do that. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, definitely. That's for you specifically. Thank you. Yeah, that really speaks to me, though, because I do feel that way that I have several avenues right now that I'm really passionate about. Like, obviously, graphic design is like my skill. That's what I went to school for. That's what I'm trained in. Um, and I'm taking on freelance projects in that department in addition to my full time job right now. And then I'm also there it doing is. pet care. So I do dog walking. There and it like, is. I, you know, and then there's yeah. the vegan thing, which mm -hmm. like I've been vegan for six years and I'm really super passionate about that. So I do have a feeling that like somewhere along the lines, there's going to be like art, veganism or the environment animals, mm -hmm. you know, like some, there's going to be like a happy place. Well, with well, all okay. Right within the next six months, even though it seems like the world is on pause right now, mm -hmm. even, you know, people are like 2020 is canceled. No, it's not 2020. You know this. I think you know this already. 2020 is not canceled. We're hitting the reset button. Yeah. We're refreshing. And the smart ones among us are doing the work. Yes. yes. Within the next six months, we're now in June. So by December, you will find yourself very involved in a new project which puts together two or more, two or more, remember at least two, maybe mm -hmm. more of your passions. That and it, so and it, <laughs> I don't know if this is a project that has a beginning, middle, end, thank you very much, here's a check, or if it's an ongoing relationship you have to a project where it goes on for years and years and years. I don't know what it is, but within the next six months, um, it's gonna be as easy as bumping into someone in a cafe. It's gonna be as easy as an accidentally bumping into somebody. It's where you, the energy of Katie attracts the energy of this thing. You just find each other, there's crossover. It could be as simple as someone hands you a business card. It could be as simple as, hey, I saw something you did. Here's an email. Can you get back to me? Please advise. But it's gonna be a very easy like, oh, hey. Oh, yeah. Hey with the way people make friends in school. Oh, hey, thanks for helping me pick my books up. It's yeah. like that. Easy, that. easy. You're not gonna have to go on a search. It's not gonna feel forced. No, 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 and it won't be. Um, the reason all of the best things, I'm picking up, the reason all of the best things that have happened to you in your life have happened is because they came from a, um, they came to you when you were in a place of understanding and knowing, and while you were looking for things to do, you weren't desperate. It's when mm -hmm. you're desperate that everything evades you. Everything mm -hmm. has come your way, and the different options have come your way. 
because you um, were calm about them. Mm. You were calm and you were in a place of knowing and you knew you had options. Um, nothing was ever done out of desperation. Everything was done from a place of prosperity. Yeah. Because you have a prosperity mindset, you don't have a poverty mindset. Oh, thank you for saying that. Thank you. Because you that's a prosperity been, mindset. Yeah. Prosperity mindset will continue to propel you forward. Um, and remember that, um, I know we're getting into the future picture right now. I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, but I, I, I'm getting this guidance and I need to give it to you. Um, everything with you going forward. Remember the fact Remember this fact, you have created great comfort for yourself in many ways. And that great comfort can be, I'm taking an hour off to read this book. You have the ability to say, I'm taking an hour off, my phone is in the other room and my computer is off and I'm taking an hour to sit and read 50 pages of this, 60 pages of this book because I need an hour off screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being told that you do that or you have I that do. ability, you block I out, do. you do, okay. Hey, you go, I'm going dark. Specific. Yeah, it's very specific if I could actually share with you. Thank, what, thank you what for validating that, that's correct? Yeah, it's very correct. Because sure. every, go ahead. Every, Tell me. So every night before I go to bed, I turn my phone on airplane mode, and then, so the alarm still works when your phone is on airplane mode, so my alarm goes off, and before I check social, before I turn airplane mode off, I go outside on my little balcony here, I pray, I meditate for five minutes and I journal for 10 minutes and then I turn off airplane mode. And that's how I start every single day, even the weekends. I'm glad my guides told me that so you could validate it. Okay, yep. I didn't know that about you at all. So yep. um, we can all learn from that. Yeah. That yeah. is one of the, that's one of, that's one of the things, that's one of the comforts you create mm -hmm. that actually relates to wealth and abundance. Mm, that's People good. who are poor and desperate don't do that. Wow. People who are desperate are always searching, searching, searching. And mm -hmm. people who are socially desperate are always looking for validation. Yeah. Or yeah. people who are socially desperate are always looking to look at other people's stuff that they're posting because they want to screenshot it and send it to their friends and throw shade at it and hate follow things or they're constantly thirsty or they're thirsty posting yeah they're looking for this but that's not <laughs> you and you know that i feel like i have glimmers sometimes <laughs> sometimes we I all am. do we all do when it's like did you see what this person just posted again today? yeah all right yeah but <laughs> The fact that you shut everything off and you go, I am going dark. Mm -hmm. I am doing this. This is my time to either sleep, nap, read a book, eat a meal while do looking at a magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do yoga right here too. That's, a, you know, and I exactly. turn on all notifications and stuff. Like you can't, yeah. Yeah. Um, that is the reason why you are doing well. It's because mm -hmm. you create that physical space. You create that physical space. Um, this is also this is also what's going to help you in future relationships. We're getting into the future picture. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Do you want to say what you want to manifest first and then I'll give you future picture? Tell me, what would you like to manifest for the future? Okay, short answer is a vegan. Anything. Answer. Tell me whatever you want, Katie. This is okay. for you. This isn't for me. This is okay. for you. Okay. Well, because I have a lot of thoughts about it that I would love tell to me. share. Go. It. It's, I would like to manifest um, in the future owning my own vegan restaurant. Ideally with my best friend, Brandon, but if something happens where it doesn't work out that we can't be business partners together, I'm okay with doing it on my own or working with someone else. Like I'm, I'm not tied to like, it doesn't have to be with him, but I would love for it to be with him because we came up with this idea together. Let me pause um, really quick. Yeah. I'm getting guidance on that. The main ingredient, and they're saying pun intended, the main ingredient, ha ha. Uh -huh. If you and Brandon hold the same space, if you and Brandon share the vision, continue to talk about it daily, weekly. I don't care if he lives in San Francisco. You can texting, obviously, on the phone, FaceTime, okay. videos. The way for the two of you to build this, keep sending energy to it. Okay. You can keep sending energy to it. Now, we live in, a, we live in an age where bands can record albums where one is in Germany and one is in England and they send the files and then they overlap the files and then they talk on yeah. Zoom about it and they jam it out on Zoom and then they create it. This is how you guys are creating this. 
if you both hold that space and if you communicate on it, you're sending energy to it, but you both have to have for the nuts and bolts and money of it, the same plan. Yeah. Start working that out while you work out the spirit of what it is you want. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Love the that. Now I'm being told to give you is you're the band creating the album, but you are going to have to think about how you're going to tour. And you're going to yeah. think about how you're going to sell your media. Um, yeah. There will be a third party, by the way. If the two of you come in, there will be a third party. Okay. From his side. I don't know if I'm, I don't know, but it feels like he could possibly know somebody who wants to come in as a third party. I don't know if this is a silent partner or a 33 and a third percent partner. Okay. But there's a third entity in this. And I, it's not a spiritual entity. It, it's not, it's not that. It's a third person i don't know if it's male or female i feel like it's on his end Um, okay ask him if he's talked about this with people he might he might have somebody or they might show up yeah that's your answer for that okay could happen could happen yeah just don't uncreate it if you want it don't uncreate it keep Mm -hmm. creating it yeah definitely right okay your next thing go ahead so I want um, there to also be an accompanying cookbook that goes along with the with the restaurant where Done. if you have like, yeah, and I mean, that's something, that's been something, that project of making my own cookbook has been something that I know it's going to happen. Like that might even come first, to be honest. Like yeah. I don't know. I don't know yet, but because I'm, I have the graphic design and the photography and the passion for food, I feel like it's a given. Like, it's like, oh yeah, duh. Like you're definitely going to make a cookbook someday, like for mm-hmm. sure. So the idea behind the cookbook though, is that first it'll be like, it'll feature some of our signature dishes that if you love it, eating it here, you can learn how to make it at home for your family. Like it's that take home. And it's one-to-one. You didn't really, you didn't hide an ingredient. Right. It's one exactly. to one. It's exact. It's the real thing. It's okay. The real All right. Thing. Okay. Yes. You know yeah. what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. The, the crabby special patty sauce patty. 28. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, totally. Um, and there would where we would sell the cookbook in like a retail space, like you know, it maybe at the the lobby or some mm-hmm. kind of small retail space where I would also sell just brands that I love, like brands that I'm really passionate about, small, like privately owned, you know, local businesses, give them some love. And you can Um, partner with, not to interrupt you, you can partner the book with other local, um, you can partner the book with other local groceries. Yes. You can partner the book, meaning we will carry and we will utilize your materials if you will post this book for sale in your store. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, like I'm, I'm really into the idea of some kind of like community project where it's work trade. Like I'll do this for you if you, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like not and even. It's fair. Money. It's mm-hmm. it's legal tender. Yeah. And it, an energetic exchange. Exactly. Just like money is an energetic exchange. Exactly. It is exactly. too. Um, I'm still getting that third party. It could be okay. a third party. The That's third great. party might be the linchpin. Okay. Okay. The third party might be the secret ingredient that you mm-hmm. need to get this either through their contacts or by bringing a fresh approach to something that you had not yet thought about. Yeah. Um, the other thing you need to think about, don't answer me this question. Here's what you need to talk. Brandon is his name? Brandon. Uh-huh. Brandon? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a provocative question that you have to ask him. This is not okay. for me, it's for him. Okay. What's going to make our place different than the others? Yes. That's the key. Yes. In there. Yeah. Is how is that different? Because every business that's successful supplies something to the public that they can be comfortable with that isn't enough like something they're used to already. Oh, I like vegan food. Let me go try out this vegan food. Or oh, I care about I happen to like plants. Let's go to this plant store. But then when mm-hmm. you get into either that restaurant or that plant store or that bookstore something there is different that keeps you coming back yes there's something there that's different that keeps you coming back and you have to i don't know what that is you and he have to figure out what your secret ingredient is what is that one thing it can be very simple the one thing that you can give your community of customers 
that makes it different than anything else. That's what I'm being told to tell you. The two of you worked that out. I love that because that kind of goes along with um, the feeling that I'm getting is that it's not going to be in LA, which is interesting for me because I love Los Angeles. This is like the best place ever for yeah. me. But I don't, I'm the feeling that I'm getting is that it's not going to be here because we're so oversaturated already yeah, with you are. restaurants that it's, we, there's enough. There's like, you know, like you said, I mean, what would make my place different? So that's why I'm almost thinking like Chicago or Detroit or like, you know, some other city where people are still open to it. Cause I don't think it would perform well in like Kentucky, no offense to Kentucky, but I don't think that there's as much the of culture, a, like, as the culture broadens and shifts, it might be because who thought that there would be Starbucks in every airport in 1971? That's true. That it's is true. Started. And, you know, look, thoughts become things as we know. Sure. Who thought we would all have a tiny little tablet in our pocket through which we can pay all our bills, check our bank balance, buy everything, yeah. do everything, and stay uh -huh. employed? Yeah. Yeah. So, look, it's possible that it could be in L.A., or there could be a branch of it in LA, or it could start in one place and migrate. But there is something about the community aspect of this that you want. And if you're starting with one place, it's a matter of the right community. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to necessarily be the region, just remember. It's the yeah. right community, yeah. not the region. Because not all places in Colorado are gonna have the types of things you're gonna have in Denver or Boulder or, sure. or Telluride. So remember, it comes, what I'm being told to tell you is it's community mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it's community, not geographics. Yeah. Not region. Yeah. I love that. I but love you'll that. know, you'll know. Yeah. You may yeah. stop on a road trip across the country, stop to get a drink or stop to get something to eat or stop to buy souvenirs and go, this is it. Yeah. I feel like, or like, you know, when you know couples go on a ride on a Saturday and they stop in some town to get something to eat or drink or get gas and they go, any houses for sale around here? Let's go for a look. I like this little town. And then they end up moving there. Yeah. So you can do that. You and Brandon though, you and Brandon are, um, you and Brandon are, I don't want to say you're necessarily twin flames, but you <laughs> are soul soulmates mm. on a soul level. Yeah, you, you I feel hold that. space for each other. You definitely I hold space that. for each other, and that's yeah. what makes good friends. When there's no competition, and when yeah. it's clean, when it's Absolutely. clean. So Absolutely. tell him I said that. He'll watch this, I'm sure. But tell him he will. Yeah, I love him so much. He's his energy really is nice. His energy is nice. I've never met him, but his energy is nice, and mm -hmm. he's trustworthy. I'm so glad that you can feel that because he yep. is he's the he's best. Trustworthy. Um, yeah. So if if the two of you do want to do this together. You have to continue to have conversations, be open mm -hmm. to a third person coming in. Sure. Yeah. That very well may happen. Yeah. Um, if the two of you end up doing other projects that take all your time, you may come back around to it. Okay. It's yeah. always open. It's open and the book and all of it. So Yeah, definitely. Do you have any other, other manifestations or other questions before we close? There's one little quick story that I did want to tell you. No, do it. To this. I love it. So, um, it's about the parrot because remember I said don't don't forget. Oh, yes, you told me a story about a parrot. parrot. Tell me. Yeah. So um, one of my dear friends, Lisa, is in the process. She's one of the people I was referring to in our pre-chat as far as um, she's been going through like animal communication training. I don't want to really call it training, but she um, is and the Akashic records, um, you know, and, and going into all of that and the healing. And she's just a very spiritually um rich person she just like has a lot of amazing connections and um really uh her vernacular like the way that she speaks and the way that she strings words together i'm like wow and she says exactly like you said it didn't come from me that came from you know i'm just the vehicle i'm just you, you know the difference between your voice and another voice yeah, yeah. so, so she would do it Yes, yeah. yes. So she was doing my Akashic records and, you know, I was supposed to come to her with questions like, you know, will I meet my soulmate or where is he or, you know, whatever questions I wanted. And one of mine that was just kind of a little funny, like, random one was, uh, was I ever an animal in a past life? And she said, before you even finished asking the question, it was immediate that you were a parrot, that you were a macaw, brightly colored parrot, Beautiful. like in, in the jungle. And I don't know if you remember this, but in your class, I did a watercolor painting of yes. a parrot. <laughs> so That's what you resonated with as a teenage girl. You were yeah. like doing this. 
And I did, I wrote like little, I don't even remember what I wrote, but it was in the leaves. Like it was Sharpie and watercolor. And so there was like the details of the, the leaves. I had hidden phrases and like maybe mantras. Does your mom have it? Yeah, she does. Have your mom snap a photo and send it to you and then text it to me. Send it to I my will. phone. I want to see it now all these years later. Yeah, but yeah, there was that was just one of many little hints along the way that the parrot is significant for me. Like I used to have a toy when I was very little that it would repeat back what you said to it. You know, you would hold the button and say, you know, hello, and it would repeat it back, hello. I'm sure and you said more than hello to well, it. Yeah, I'm oh sure you did. Trust me, my parents hated that toy, but I loved it. I was, I a big, it. I was an only child at that point too, so that was like how I was talking to people it was through through the parents. Who was their second child at that point? I know exactly. And then like there was there was another like I was a parrot for Halloween in preschool. Like there was um, oh another story when I told my parents about the parrots and stuff. They were like, "Do you remember we took you um, into like a, a pet store and it was they had the birds were just flying freely. They weren't in cages." And I was very young and I got scared because the, the screeches and the noise and I like yeah. cried and stuff. But then I kept asking like wanting to go back. Like I still liked it there. You had you needed to go back. Yeah. Yeah, you needed it again. You needed yeah. to go back into that space again. Yeah. So funny. But yeah, so I just, I think, I think the symbol of the parrot, like the colorfulness, and she also said that I was um, very, like, I was like kind of the HBIC of the of the parrots in that, you know, like I was like- Oh, you were, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. you as HBIC, that's good. Yeah, yeah. By the way, for those the uninitiated, she means head bitch in charge. <laughs> yes, so I think maybe somewhere, I don't think it would be in the logo of the restaurant, but somewhere there's gonna be a parrot in the yeah. restaurant. Like in yeah, the, there, the I was gonna box. say, I, I would like to see how you incorporate that in how, how the parrot, unfold the imagery of the parrot unfolds throughout your life mm -hmm. it might even be time just for fun create a graphic representation or some graphic representations of a parrot yeah i like that you mm -hmm. know even if it starts with a sketch that you scan mm -hmm. or photograph and then you color it yeah or you manipulate it on the computer or maybe just if you have time do a new painting of a parrot yeah, I would love that. Just go in and I do really it. Would. I mean, yeah. you know what? That's fantastic. Isn't that so funny? <laughs> so, Amy, yeah. I have to tell you, this this chat has been really great. I hope it's been enriching. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure we're going to continue to have conversations where we talk about how these things will manifest. Remember, six months. You're going to have some new opportunities in there. Thank you. By December, one of them will definitely be you'll be deeply involved. Cool, okay. Yeah, but right now though, you're fine. You're doing all the right stuff. You're good. Mm, this is so amazing for my soul. Thank you. Good. Thank, thank you, thank you. Well, we'll chat a little bit after I shut this off, but goodbye everybody. Thanks for watching. Love Bye. you, Katie. Thank you. <laughs>